talk about trig identities. What is an identity, you may ask? Well, an identity is something in math that is always true. For example, 2x plus 3x equals 5x. That is something that is true for all x. We could call that an identity. All right? Um, you know, a squared plus b squared equals c squared in a right triangle where a and b are the legs and c is the hypotenuse. This is something that is, <laughs> this is something that is always true, okay? I could prove that these are true, right? There are many proofs that this is true, so I won't go there. Um, let's see, how can I prove that this is true? Well, let me do some factoring. I'm going to factor out an x, that's a greatest common factor. I'm left with 2 plus 3, boom, that's a 5, 5x equals 5x. Voila, I have just proven that that is true, okay? What we're going to do is we are going to be introduced to a whole bunch of trig identities. I'm not going to list them here, there are tons of them. You can open up any calculus book and write in the Right in the cover, often they have a whole bunch of different trig identities. We've already met a few of them. Um, we've met the Pythagorean, one of the Pythagorean trig identities. And we've met some of the identities that are true by virtue of definition. So for example, the tan is equal to the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. This is an identity. Right? This is true because we've defined tangent in this way. Okay, so some identities are true because we have defined them that way, and others are true because we can prove that they're the case. Um, we have, for example, secant of theta is 1 over the cosine of theta. Again, this is an identity, and it's an identity because this is how I define secant. But there are other trig identities that you're going to meet which can be proven. One is the one I already mentioned, the Pythagorean trig identity. This is a trig identity. It's always true. Hey. Hey, Dante, come on over. Let's have a cameo. Quick. <laughs> Quick, come on. Whoa. Whoa. Hey. Hey. Okay. All right. See you later. We're talking later. about trig identities. You Absolutely. have to watch this later so you can see yourselves. Absolutely. All right. Exactly what I'm gonna do. Have fun. Yes. <laughs> All right. Shall we prove that this is true? What do you think, Dante? Should we prove that this is true? I think that we should. Gil, you agree? Absolutely. All right. Let's do it. All right. Let's do it. So here we go. I'm going to create a right triangle in my unit circle. I have a hypotenuse of one. Lily, you want to come have a cameo? No, I really don't. All right, all right, all right. So I'm going to define this angle to be theta. And I think we can agree that I can call this side y and this side x. So the coordinates of this point are x comma y. We're OK? Part of my unit circle here. So here I go. Hey, Pythagoras said I could do x squared plus y squared equals 1 squared. Pythagorean theorem x squared plus y squared equals 1 squared. All right, that seems doable. Hey, cosine is defined to be my adjacent side divided by my hypotenuse. So is it not true that the cosine of theta would be x over 1? Cosine of theta is x over 1, or x. So can I not just substitute this x with cosine theta? I think I can. And is it not true that sine is defined to be opposite over 1, or in the unit circle, just y? So I can replace that y with sine of theta. And I think we all agree that 1 squared is 1. And voila, I have just proven that that identity is true for all theta. So this is how these trig identities can work. By the way, there are two more of these Pythagorean trig identities that we use a lot. 
I think you should try to derive them. I'll give you a hint. They might have some tan in there, or secant, or cosecant. Give it a try. That's a nice challenge. But what we are going to do, <clears throat> excuse me, what we are going to do is we are going to prove some trig identities by just kind of rewriting one side, doing some algebra to one side to try to make the one side look like the other side. What the heck am I talking about? Let's try. Let's say I have tan of theta times cosine of theta. And I am saying that that is equal to sine of theta. And let's say I want to prove that this is an identity. So again, a proof here would mean I have to prove that this is true for all theta. So can I just try some angles, like say, OK, let's say theta is pi over 2. Let's see if that works. Let's try theta is 3 pi over 4. Let's see if that works. Would that be a proof? No, that might demonstrate that this is probably true. But to prove that this is true for all theta, I really have to do something that shows that this equals this if theta is equal to anything. So there are various ways to do this. But one way to do it, and don't worry, I'm not going to do a two-column proof. That's a Euclidean formal type of proof. We're going to do a different kind of proof. I just drew that line to establish my two sides. What I often do is I pick one side to play with. I might rewrite it. I might do a little algebra. Okay. For these proofs, I don't want to think about solving an equation. I don't want to do the same thing to both sides. Instead, I really want to just see if I can rewrite one side, kind of like what I did with that 2x plus 3x equals 5x. Remember, I just factored out the x and made the one side look like the other. Let's do that here. So what can I do? Pause the video and see if, how I could rewrite this to help me. Are you back? Did you have some ideas? I was thinking, hey, what if I rewrite tangent in its ingredients? By its ingredients, I mean sine and cosine. Tan is defined to be the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta. So let's just see if that helps. Do you see what I see? I see a ratio. I see a number. I see multiplication. I see something that can divide. Don't those divide? Yes, they do. And what am I left with? I'm left with sine of theta. Hey, sine of theta? I'm pretty sure sine of theta equals sine of theta. I have just proven that this is an identity. OK? Now, I always end my proof with a little symbol. Some people use QED. It's Latin for, uh, shoot, I always forget what that's for. As it has been demonstrated, something like that. Sometimes you see mathematicians use little triangles. I use my smiley face. I encourage you to develop your own little symbol that means QED. I have established that this is an identity.